In this video, we're gonna count down the top five most important godfathers of the yo-yo industry. But before we do that, we wanna remind you that we will be giving the results of our Instagram contest at the end of the video and launching our next contest where you can win a $25 gift card to the yoyotricks.com store. But before we do that, here's our top five countdown. For a yo-yo man to rise to the rank of yo-yo godfather, they have to be widely known and recognized in their own day, as well as having made a lasting impact on the yo-yo industry. While these great men are all titans of yo-yo and have each played a major role in making yo-yo into what it is today, it's worth mentioning that they are being recognized on our list for their impact on society at large and not just within the yo-yo community. Number five. Coming in at number five is Dale Oliver. Dale started working as a full-time traveling demonstrator for the Duncan Yo-Yo Company in 1957, and today he's most well known as being one of the four national yo-yo grandmasters. We recognize him as the founder of the modern day world yo-yo contest, which he won in 1992, and the originator of freestyle yo-yoing where performances are set to music. Also worth mentioning, Dale Oliver is credited with presenting off-string yo-yoing to the world all the way back in the 1950s. Number four. Coming in at number four is Hans von Don Elsen, the wizard of yo-yo design and demonstration, also known as Johans. Hans got his start as a yo-yo performer during the 90s as a major player for the now defunct Playmax Yo-Yo Company. During his heyday in the mid-90s, Hans toured the world far and wide, inspiring thousands of new players and even making a huge splash on the UK pop music charts with his awkward cover of the Bangles song, Walk Like an Egyptian, Walk the dog like an Egyptian. Walk the dog like an Egyptian. Hans and his Playmax teammate Benny McPhee later went on to start the company we all know and love today, Yo Yo Factory. Hans was behind the development of prominent yo-yo factory technologies like the Fast 201 and Velocity Yo-Yo Adjustable Response Systems and also Hub Stacks. Rumor has it you might even spot the elusive Johans in person at a yo-yo contest if you peek behind the curtain at the yo-yo factory booth. Hans recently broke the Guinness World Record for the most inside loops performed in 60 seconds, doing 159 loops at the London Toy Fair. Number 3 up next in the number three spot is the big kahuna himself, Mr. Nagao. Now we know what you might be thinking. Evan Nagao is an amazing talent in the modern yo-yo world and the current US national yo-yo champion, but what has he done over the course of yo-yo history to earn a spot on this list? Well, actually we aren't talking about the prodigal son, but his father, Mr. Alan Nagao, Evan's dad. Before the big yo-yo boom in the 1990s, Alan Nagao was responsible for organizing Team High Performance, or THP, a high-energy, highly choreographed team of traveling yo-yo demonstrators who took the world by storm with their fancy teal polo shirts. Yo-yo historians point to THP as the most significant driving force in the yo-yo boom for the 1990s, and it would never have come together without Alan Nagao pulling the strings and hosting yo-yo training camps in Hawaii to hone their skills. Up through the ranks of THP rose many yo-yo professionals who still dominate the sport to this day. Number two. Coming in at number two is the one and only Donald F. Duncan Sr. Mr. Duncan is recognized by historians as a master of business and marketing, and he is credited with the ideas for good humor ice cream trucks, incentivized marketing tactics such as box tops, and to the chagrin of many, the widespread distribution of the parking meter. But as the story goes, Duncan simply couldn't stand the idea of having the general public associate his name with the parking meter, and so instead, he found an emerging toy manufacturer with great potential, bought the company, and renamed it the Duncan Yo-Yo Company. According to history, Duncan devised a marketing scheme where the newspapers would advertise Duncan Yo-Yo competitions and no cost to Duncan, and in return, the entry fee for contestants was just to sell newspaper subscriptions. The newspapers loved the increase in subscriptions and the paper boys loved yo-yoing. The first yo-yo boom of the 1930s took off and the rest is history. Before we get to the top spot on our list, we have an honorable mention which goes to the yo man, Tommy Smothers. One half of the popular comedy duo known as the Smothers Brothers, who with his brother Dick, 
hosted the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour on CBS television in the 1960s, were highly influential figures in the countercultural movement which arose during the Vietnam War era. Tommy later developed the Yo Man comedy skit, which later evolved into a widely distributed instructional VHS tape that many people remember fondly. Number one. And last, but certainly not least, the ultimate godfather of yo-yoing is the legendary Pedro Flores. As the story goes, it was in the 1920s when Pedro Flores, a Filipino immigrant living in California, recalled playing with the yo-yo as a boy growing up in the Philippines and was inspired to try his hand at business. Yo-yo historians credit Flores with being the first to use looped yo-yo string rather than tying a knot on the axle which allowed the yo-yo to sleep and spin at the end of the string and open up a world of tricks to explore. Flores began manufacturing wooden yo-yos in the late 1920s and had great success selling them on the street while demonstrating tricks. It was on a business trip to California in 1929 when Donald F. Duncan encountered Pedro Flores firsthand and immediately bought the Flores Yo-Yo Company, turning Flores into a very wealthy man during the Great Depression. But Flores stuck with the yo-yo and held a very important role as a lead demonstrator for the company. He was responsible for hiring and training the Duncan Yo-Yo Men, professional demonstrators who were tasked with hosting the Duncan Yo-Yo competitions that the newspapers advertised. These demonstrators, many of whom were Filipino immigrants like Flores, took boxes of yo-yos to corner stores and schoolyards across the country, showing tricks and telling extravagant stories like the myth that yo-yos were used as a weapon in the ancient Philippines, which is just a fun story that was entirely made up by these demonstrators. The widespread acceptance of this fictional story as fact, even today nearly a century later, is a testament to how effectively these demonstrators brought yo-yos to every corner of the United States. So what are your opinions? Did we get it right, or did we miss some of the most important yo-yo godfathers of all time? Let us know in the comments below. Of course, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this and learn how to yo-yo. Now we turn to Chris to fill us in about the most recent Instagram contest. Thanks, Chick. The Yo Tricks Bind Instagram contest is now closed and we have a winner. Congratulations to Lucas Decker who pulled off this really cool behind the head combo with a risky around the neck bind. Check your Instagram DMs to claim your prize. Stay tuned at the end of this broadcast for more of our favorite entries. For next week's Instagram contest, we want you to post a video of a combo including the trick Jake recently taught, Monkey Madness. If you're just learning the trick and want to go for the seismic slam combo that Jake demonstrates in the tutorial video, that's great. But remember, original combos will always score more points. Be sure to use the hashtag YoTricksMM when you post your trick on Instagram. For the full list of official contest rules, go to YoYoTricks.com forward slash InstaContest. This week's contest winner will receive a $25 gift card to YoYoTricks.com. Remember, the winner is randomly selected, so even if your video isn't the best, you still have a shot at winning. And don't forget, we'll be featuring some of our favorite entries at the end of our next weekly YoYo update. This is Christopher Chun signing off asking you, how did the telephone propose to his girlfriend? He gave her a ring. Huh? <laughs>